Hello everyone, hi everyone, welcome back again, welcome back. Let me just uh, shut down the music and quit the background. I think now you should be able to see me, so hi everyone. Welcome back again to our last session in this series about um, our first um, e-commerce app that we were building or our first e-commerce API that we're building. So if you don't know me, my name is David. It's so nice to see you all. This is like uh, my fourth stream right here in this Global Hack Week. So why don't we get us started and build the rest of our API. So if you haven't watched all the series of uh, building our first API with TypeScript and also MySQL and SQLite, uh, let me just open some stuff that we're going to be using today so you can see them. And also let me be opening uh, my GitHub so you can also have access to the GitHub repository. So just one moment until my slides are loading. So while we wait, um, let me know in the chat if, if this is your first stream, if you have been on the last streams or the previous streams um in this series so let me just share my screen so you can see the slides that i'm talking about and there you go you should be seeing them right now and okay it looks like you are able to see them so again welcome back again to create your first e-commerce api with TypeScript and mysql the name of the of the workshop has been changed or well the, of the stream or, or the technical stream so if this is the first time you're watching this uh, channel welcome back to this global hack week apis global hack weeks are uh, all, all of the streams that we are making here in mlh and activities they just like a celebration you can um, enter to uh, ghw.mlh.io so you can uh, see the challenges the current streams that we have and I think tomorrow is actually the last day that we're going to be having for this Global Hack Week. We're going to wrap up all the activities that we did on Global Hack Week. And also we're going to be changing, um, we're going to be changing from uh, Global Hack Week this, uh, this time. So yeah, why don't we uh, start? First of all, my name is David. You can call me uh, David, um, David Lazaro, uh, Dave, however you want to call me. I'm okay with that. So. Um, I'm, I'm David, I'm David Lazaro. I'm a coach here at the MLH. I've been working as a coach like a year and two months or something like that. Uh, I've been working also as a campus expert in communities. I'm a software developer engineer at Aspen Tech. So as I was saying, I, I've i been working in communities and hackathons as a GitHub campus expert. Uh, I've been working on hackathons too. Hackathons are something that I really love. Like I do love super, super good. Like, uh, like I, I don't know why, but I really love being in communities with new persons, new hackers, and try to help hackers to build hackathons on their communities. So if you have a hackathon or you want to build your first hackathon, but you don't have any idea of how to start building, how, how to uh, search for sponsorship and things like that, uh, send me a DM on LinkedIn or something like that. I'm going to, uh, to send my, um, my social media uh, links here on the slides. Uh, actually, I think is the next slide. So yeah, if you have a hackathon or you want to build a hackathon, just reach me out on LinkedIn, send me a DM, and we can work together so you can build your first hackathon. So yeah, uh, I founded a hackathon on here in Mexico. Uh, yeah, I think I didn't say anything of that. But yeah, I'm Mexican. If you can um, understand my, my accent or something like that, let me know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm Mexican. Um, living right now on Mexico City. Um, so, so yeah, pretty much I founded a hackathon in the north of Mexico. Uh, it is a hackathon called Tigre Hacks. So if you want to learn more about Tigre Hacks, just Google uh, Tigre Hacks on Google and you're going to see the hackathon things. So once upon a time, I was also um, an MLH fellow on the summer 2022 uh, slash B in uh, batch at Meta. I was working as Perchin Engineer fellow um in that batch and yeah if you don't know anything about the mlh fellowship uh mlh fellowship it is a really cool program that you can be participating on you can apply on and it is a paid program so 
if you are a student or if you want to uh, learn new things or uh, if you have been implementing projects on your in the last months or hacking some new projects, uh, I encourage you to apply. Please apply. Uh, I'm sending the link of the MLA fellowship um, right on the on the link of I mean on the chat. You can take a look into to that. So let me. Yeah, I think you should be able to see now the fellowship. Uh, um, links so you can just take a look into fellowship. Fellowship is a really, really cool thing that I encourage you to participate on. So you are learning um, to become a software engineer. Uh, you gain real world experience. You are interacting with a community that is super, super helpful, super great. And there are three batches. The one that I participated on is the cyber liability engineering. But in that time, it was called a uh, production engineer. Uh, batch and it was sponsored by Meta. Meta also has um, a lot of uh, open source uh, projects that uh, fellows uh, work on. So I certainly encourage you to take a look at the fellowship and to apply. The only thing that you need is a project that you've been working on, uh, so you can apply and you can have an interview with um, with someone that actually has um, some kind of experience with that and. Yeah, pretty much that's it. Please apply to MLS Fellowship. And currently I'm building tech startup, research tools, and more. And so if you have any questions or you want to reach me out on social media, here are my social media. So it's X, uh, GitHub, and LinkedIn. So if you want to reach out in any of those social media, just send me a message. Here are my texts. Um, yeah, pretty much that's it. So yeah, uh, on the past series, we build being the, we've been building a lot of stuff uh, with, uh, with Node.js, TypeScript, Express and MySQL, we have been using GitHub Cloud Spaces. Um, also, we were building an API with Express. We were trying to take a look in how to install MySQL database, create architecture of our API, create a structure of a database. And actually we were kind of um, making some stuff with our API, with our client and also with MySQL. We learn the basics about what is an API, the types of API addresses, the type of requests that we can send on an, on an API, what is a database, the types of databases that exist, how a table uh, relational database work, uh, how tables work on databases. And yeah, basically that's all that we are making today. And um, hi, Green Joshi. Hi, Farone. Welcome back. It's so nice to see you folks again. Um, Supra B hacks. What does Supra B hacks mean? Pachuca Pachanga time. Yeah, that's Pachuca Pachanga time. So how are you? How are you doing, Green Yoshi? How are you doing, Farron? Uh, give me just one minute until I open my code spaces so we can jump into continuing building our, uh, our repo. And if you don't have the link of our code spaces, just um, uh, go here into this link and you build you're going to be able to take a look into our repo. So yeah, pretty much I just send the link into the chat so you can fork the, the repo or work with that. And pretty much the only thing that we've been doing today is um, is uh, uh, build our, our, um, our API system. Oh my God, I think I have something, uh, something wrong with, with this, but... Uh, give me just one minute. And I think now. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I just I just had one problem with my code spaces, but now I'm able to to use my code spaces. So yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's continue with that. Uh, let me share my tab so you can see my code spaces so we can continue with that. So as you can see here, um, uh, let me just read the chat. I think Farron sent a message. So it says, it is my understanding that Supra B hacks is indie for good hacks. All right. Like, really? I, I didn't know that. Like, Supra B hacks. What does Supra B hacks mean? Uh, huh. I think I... I'm not able to find that, but alrighty. Yeah, let's just continue with this. I, I didn't quite find anything about uh, Super B hacks, but it's a really, really interesting. Uh, it is a really interesting fun fact about 
uh, in new language. Uh, so, okay, I think everything has been already uploaded and my code faces are almost ready to go. So, why don't we continue with this? So as you can see here, we had our code spaces and this is the code base that we are using. We have configuration. We have the following um, folders. Let me just uh, minimize everything. So we have a lot of stuff right here going on. We have our the architecture of our project. We have config, controllers, DB, my, middleware, migrations, models, node models, routers, seeder services. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And But the other thing that you need to worry about is that um, um, the first thing that you need to do is to actually pull the or fork the repo and open a new code space. And why are we using code spaces? Is because we're installing uh, some packages from Linux, like MySQL Server and other stuff that we're using currently in this project. So last stream, what we did was actually creating our first controller with. Um, user control uh, JS. We learned about uh, what a CRUD was, uh, which were like the basic uh, con um, functions that a controller should have and that can manage data, like create users, read users, update users, delete users, and things like that. We learned how to create a doc stream for our function and also how to start working with all these, um, with all these uh, parameters, like uh, what is a request, what is a uh, response. This is actually a response. I don't know why it says a request. And uh, let me see if this is correct. Oh, uh, yeah, this is correct here. Uh, here too. Okay, I think I have something <laughs> really bad right now. But um, let me just continue doing this. And okay, everything should be ready to go right now. So, um, alrighty. So yeah, pretty much what we did on the last stream was creating our first controller, understanding what the controls were, uh, what a migration was, how migrations work with our databases, uh, what a model is, and how our RRM SQLize works. Let me just search again SQLize so you, I can show you the what I'm talking about. So yeah, pretty much we use SQLize for um, for uh, trying to connect our Node.js API with uh, with any kind of database that we want, for example, MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite, SQL Server, or things like that, how we can define models with um, with SQLize, and how we can uh, also make uh, queries for doing this. So yeah, pretty much we uh, we were reading the docs of SQLize, uh, understanding wh what a model is and which type of model box is. The data types that um, our model um, provides to us, like the strings, booleans, integers, uh, floats, decimals, and things like that, that we are going to be using inside our data types and inside our models. So the other stuff that we actually learned that part was um, how to how to install our SQLize CLI that I think I have right here. SQLize CLI, um, yeah. Was this one we actually uh, install uh, SQLize CLI? We understood how to initialize a SQLize project inside our API. Uh, how to use how to configure our uh, SQLize um, configuration and how to create our first model with the help of SQLize. Give me just one minute so I can connect my laptop. <clears throat> there you go. And yeah, pretty much I think we're okay. Yeah, so pretty much I think that's most of the things that we learned um in our past stream. The other thing that we actually learned is to understood how migrations would work with controllers and how our API actually um was communicating itself with MySQL database or with any kind of database. We were talking about our models and how our models can have like uh, different type, kinds of attributes, or properties, and how SQLize or how our RRM helps us to just by uh, telling the API how a model is going to be defined um, to use our ORM to actually call our MySQL database. And so MySQL database can understood, uh, understand which kind of tables um, uh, MySQL needs to, to build 
with the help of our ORM and with the models and how the models can actually be inside controllers. So these models can understand how to, um, so our controller can make or can, um, can take all the logic that we need to take for implementing new stuff like creating a new user or uh, finding a new, new a new user read a, read a new, new uh, I'm sorry read a new user update user information or delete uh, user information by their ID and things like that. So until now we have uh, like almost everything. The only thing that we haven't worked into is like um, working with our database that uh, that uh, JS. Uh, file and why we want a why why we want a database um, file or uh, like we want this code because what we're going to do is to to try to communicate with our uh, database with the help of our our code and so we can whenever we are working with this new. Um, new API, if someone is going to use our API, if, if we want to implement like how to initialize a new database in our local computer, we need the help of code. So our API or our computer can communicate with the database and the database can initialize or try to tries to connect to this um, with this API. So how we're going to do that is like, remember that Last uh, last stream, we actually installed this um, this MySQL client that we were going to use with the help of Node.js, which is called MySQL2. And why we want to do that is because actually we need to implement some stuff right here. And this stuff is going to be the configuration of our of our database. And the first thing that we are going to do is to import MySQL from MySQL2. After that, we're going to be connecting. Now, I think actually this is not the thing that I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm looking for is uh, actually until now, we're going to change this TS to JS so we can work around our database connection. So pretty much the only thing that we're going to do here is to configure the connection of our database. And how we're going to do that is by just um, trying to use the same models that we're using with our JSON that we already have, like remember that we have our configuration right here in config.json. So we're going to use a model that can connect with uh, with our index.js file or index.ts file that we're going to be using. And this model is going to be uh, having the same parameters that we're passing to our development um, database. So basically what we're going to do is, uh, I think actually we can change this to TypeScript. Let me just use this TS and pretty much we're going to say, um, hey, I want you to create a new constant, which is called dbconfig. And dbconfig is going to, uh, to be having the following parameters. So because we are uh, using like a kind of JSON, we're going to change that for just simple bar, uh, parameters or variables. So give me just one minute until I uh, configure all the stuff. And because we are creating a new uh, type or an, a new model or something like that, uh, the only thing that we're going to be saying here is, um, hey, please, uh, this model is going to be exporting and what we are going to be exporting is db.config. So with this, we should be ready to go. And we should be ready to go to use this model wherever we want, actually. So now the only thing that we need to do is to to actually create, um, to actually use these models in some part, like, I don't know, like uh, another file, like db in, uh, initiator ts and the only thing that this is going to be using is to import uh, our clients from mysql and what are we going to import is actually a promise um, that is called promise and this is imported from from uh 
mysql2 slash promise and i think this is called mysql yeah i feel we're going to use mysql yeah there you go so yeah the only thing that we're going to import is mysql client from mysql2 slash promise and the other thing that we need to import is the the actual db configuration and this db configuration is going to be in db.ts, but I don't know why we're having an error. Uh, it's not a model. It's not a model. Why does it not? Um, that's be db. Why isn't a model? We actually have model right here, right? We have um a model that we we're actually um importing like exporting some stuff. Um. I think I'm missing something maybe, but, uh, oh yeah, this is actually a constant, right? So, oh no, what's going on here? Uh, let's try to see what is going on here. Um, okay, give me just one minute so I can see which one is a problem. And let me just open um, the, the documentation right here so I can try to see if this is the correct. Um, um, uh, lo let me see how I can. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Require. Uh, give me just one minute. Um, I'm trying to see. Um, uh, actually, let me just share my screen. So I'm um, I'm actually asking ChatGPT what is going on here. So I'm trying to to export um, TS model uh, constant from a TS model and import it in another file. And let me just. Save and submit this. Import the blah, 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 blah. Pretty big configure some TypeScript files. You can use them. In my TypeScript files, you can use import the same instance. It's exporting is model export is given in JS format. You need to. Uh, okay, so I need to use require, but actually I can use another one. Like um, make sure to replace. If you want an ACX model syntax port and import, uh okay import from blah, blah blah okay oh yeah there you go export cons db config all right so i think because we're actually using um the this is actually a common js kind of import what we need to do is to do something like export default uh db config yeah there you go like uh and we can actually do just uh db config yeah there you go so okay, we are we actually have uh, just right here um, our configuration, and what we need to do now is just to uh, to initialize our db um, our db initializer, and how we can do that is by creating something called a pool. So let me just search what is a pool in my SQL. So there you go. So let's just try to read the documentation in MySQL. So we define as a pool or a connection pool as something that operates on the client side to ensure that MySQL client does not constantly connect to the, or disconnect from the SQL server. And it is designed to cache a little connection from MySQL client for the use by other users as they are needed. So in other words, it is like the middle part that ensures that my client or like our client that is our computer can be connecting like um, successfully with our MySQL server that again, it's on our computer, but we can see it as our database or as our server that is handling our, the, the, the run of our database. So let's just continue with that and how we can implement a pool in like how we can implement a pool right here is by doing const pool is equal to my SQL 
dot create pool and we are passing the db config which is actually um, just the configuration of our db of our mysql file so let me just try to take a look now also. string dialog pool options blue db config uh -huh. password and compatibles to no listeners on the fine, all right, let me just take a look here. Yeah, password actually needs to be something like this. And I think with this now we should be able to go, yeah, it's, it was because we're not using password. And what are we going to do is that our DB initiator is going to export the file our pool because we want to actually be using this uh, DB or this pool in our index.ts file or whenever we're using our, whenever we're using, or we're going to be initial, initiating our uh, database connection, we are going to, um, we are going to first import our um, DB initiator by use, um, um, by using, uh, I, for, I totally forget how we are importing this uh, pool from, uh, my DB initiator and how we're going to use this pool is by just um, is, is by just creating a, a new pool and the first thing that we're going to say is that hey I need to do some stuff right here in our API before doing that but let's just ignore that the first thing that you need to know is that the only thing that we need to do currently is to modify our listen um, our our listen um, function so we can first try to see if our connection with our DB is correctly and how we can test that is by doing first a uh, pool that um, is by doing cool pool that query so we can try to make a query and we're going to do uh, we're going to, no, I don't want to do this. Sorry, it was compiled. And what are we going to be using is just saying, hey, please just select one plus one and as solution. And if we get something from this, it means that we actually are correctly um, connected, connected to our database. So, uh, let me just fix this and uh, give me just one minute to see if we are actually doing the same thing. Uh, alrighty. Yeah, let me just keep right here. Um, so, okay, let's try to first uh, finish this by adding a new catch. And we're going to yeah, ca yeah, catch this and close this stuff. And if we have something, uh, like an error, we're going to uh, say uh, fail to connect error with database um, with the following error. Error, and we're going to be passing the actual error that we are experimenting. So, okay, let me just try to try to explain what are we doing here. So, okay, remember the only thing that we're doing here is to import the pool constant. The pool constant is actually a MySQL that create pool with the database configuration that we're passing. The remember this DB config that we're passing is just a configuration that we're having for our development database uh, that my uh, that SQL is create for us. And what are we doing here is to just saying, hey, please configure yourself a lot, like initialize a new pool connection from my client to my SQL server and and try to connect to the following database with the with this these specifications which are uh, hey use the following user use the following password the host is going to be like on localhost and the lot dialect that we're going to be using is MySQL so first wait for connections and if we have more than thing collect uh, connections just like um, and and your uh, like don't accept more than ten connections. So we're exporting this pool constant so we can uh, initialize a new pool inside my SQL 
and we're we're importing that pool inside our index TS. That is the one who handles that our Express app gets initiated. But before initiating something, we need to check out if we have we have been able to connect ourselves with our with the with the database. So we're doing select one plus one a solution to just try to make a quick query. And if that query was successful, it means that we are actually connected to our database. But if we have something wrong with that or something happens, we're going to send an error that we have failed to connect with our database with the following error. And the error is going to be the following one. Okay, until now, we are almost ready to try to test if our connection was successful. But first we need to do some stuff. And while with the stuff I'm talking about, um, first of all, we need to open our terminal and our terminal is going to be, um, the first thing that we need to do is to make a sudo is u root so we can change to our root um, user inside Linux and we can um, have more privileges or more ab abilities to try to run more scripts or with administrator permissions. So um, the first thing that we need to check out is that um, is that we are actually able to um, to run MySQL and how we can do that is by doing services um, MySQL not services status uh, all. Um, I, oh yeah, actually it's, it's not services, it's service. So we have, uh, what is going on with Compiler? Uh, I mean, with GitHub? Uh, I'm not really sure what is going on. I think my internet connection may be the one who's failing or I don't know if it is up, but yeah, it was my internet connection. So as you can see here, we are actually, um, we are actually, MySQL is actually not enabled right now. And how we can start the service is by doing service, uh, MySQL start. And if we execute that, MySQL database is going to be running. And now if we execute the command MySQL, we should be able to get into MySQL um, CLI so we can take a look into the databases that we currently have and that we're currently running. So give me just one minute. I think again, my skills, my, like my GitHub is failing. I don't know why. Uh, there you go. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, oh my God, it says that it failed. Yeah. Please let, let me know if this is my connection or if you cannot hear me well or if I'm having problems or something like that. So yeah, we are we were actually not able to start um, MySQL ser service. So alrighty, so it is running. So um, let's just try to run MySQL. And now that we have, run yeah, there you go. As you can see here, we are already on our MySQL CLI. And how we can continue with this is by just trying to show the current databases that we have. And let me add the semicolons. So as you can see here, we have the e-commerce database. So in our uh, DB config or our DB um, model, what we are using is database development, but we want to change this. So instead of using development, we use e-commerce. And the and I think that should be all. So now what we want to do is to try to just um, try to run our um, I'm sorry, is try to run our <coughs> our API. And how we can do that is by executing um, mpx ts node and uh, index .ts. I think, or I think it was MPX TS node um, blank space index TS. Um, yeah, I think it's actual this one. 
we don't have this node. I, th I think we have already installed TX node. Uh, okay, so, well, this is stored. If you have any questions or if my connection is still like super bad or something like that, please let me know um, if something um, goes wrong. So give me just one minute until this runs out. So, alrighty. So the first thing that we are seeing is that we're actually we actually was able to to run TS node and uh, ignoring the configuration option pass connection username. This current a warning, but in the future version my scale, blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, so user the username uh, is because we don't have a, a user configured in our MySQL database. So the first thing is that we are actually trying to uh, connect with, with our database, but we had an, an error in the pool um, with the in, in the pool with my with our client and the server. So the SQL message is that we have access denied for user, the name of the user and localhost using password yes. So what we need to do is to create a new user on MySQL. So how we can do that is by um, how we can create an user in MySQL. I'm just typing this to, to touch this so we can uh, create a new user. So how we can do that is by, first of all, executing MySQL. And what we're going to do is to execute the command create um, create a new user and after um, using the the keyword user we need to actually say the name of the user so we're going to say something like hacker uh, we need to use at and we need to actually uh, tell the host that we're going to be using and the host that we're going to be using is localhost so i think with this we should be just ready to go and we should oh yeah and actually we need to identify our user by something identify it by and we need to use up our password and it's going to be a uh, hack and we need to add the semicolon and now you have an error you just go sit check the amount of correspond my skill you server uh all right so it looks like it then oh yeah i had a typo right there so it is it it then if it then Identified, I think, identified, identified by hack. And there you go. We have created a new user. So the username is not going to be root. It's going to be actually um, hack, hacker. And the password is going to be hack. And the database that we were going to, to access. Oh, yeah. We need to have also grant some privileges to our uh, to our hacker user. So how we can do that is by granting more privileges so our, to our user. So we're going to do that by saying grant privileges, um, grant privileges, um, I'm sorry, grant all privileges uh, on, and we need to add our user, which is, uh, okay, grant uh, all privileges, um to our hacker at localhost and we need to use the semicolon and actually this is not right because we need to uh specify the the database that we're going to be using and this database is going to be um e-commerce to our user that is that one um yeah, pretty much. I think this is the the command that we are looking for. Run all privileges, all privileges on e-commerce to hacker uh, localhost, and so your e-commerce to localhost at one. Run all privileges on. Well, let's try to use instead of this something like uh, like this. Not database selected. Uh, so I think it it was actually database. Oh yeah, e-commerce. Commerce. 
What? Grant all privileges on e-commerce. You have an error? No, actually it is this one. On e-commerce dot this. There you go. We have granted all privileges to our user. Um, yeah, everything is being done in the terminal. I'm sorry if I'm not like talking about this. Uh, I'm just checking the chat right now. Uh, so if you have any questions, please let me know the questions that you have so I can talk with you and I can um, um, tell you everything. So give me just one minute. Um, And yeah, pretty much what we have just done is to initialize our MySQL CLI because we had a problem trying to, while running our API, we had the problem of access denied for user uh, localhost using password, yes. So now that we have granted all privileges to our user hacker at, uh, at localhost, what we're we just going to do is to try to run again our API so let me just run again our mpx ts node in this dot ts to uh what are, what is going on here um so we have an error error access denied for user uh at localhost so i don't know if we had a problem right here i think the problem is that we're not actually using our user right here i don't know if um this is using um, some other um, configuration. Let me see if is actually this um, if it is actually this um, it, it is using the config that JSON. Uh, I don't think so to be honest. Um, uh, SQL message access denied for user uh -huh, at a local host. Uh, so I don't know what is the problem currently. So we're passing dbconfig and we're initiating a new create pool with dbconfig. So we're passing the user name, we're passing password, database host, and things like that. So give me just one minute to try to see which one is problem. Why are we not getting connected to our uh, to our database with the correct configuration that we're using. So give me just one second so I can try to search for a solution. So currently we're using uh, index.ts and SQL state port. Yeah, we're using port 3000 on uh, our service is running on another one right so we have error access denied for user ignoring volume configuration option pass to connection username okay i think it's because we are not passing the correct configuration ignoring volume configuration option pass to connection username this is currently a warning but in future versions of mysql error we'll be trying to be passing the volume configuration option to connection okay so actually we're not using the correct configuration for our um db config so I think what our DB connection is actually expecting for is uh, pull options. And our pull options, we can see them um, right here. So let me just take a look into what are actually our pull options. Connection limit, mod ill, q limit. And I think we are not using the correct um, configuration for this. So give me just one minute so we can use use the correct. Uh, oh yeah, I think I think I see what uh what is the problem. Uh, so the the problem is that we're actually not passing the correct information. So instead of using this, we should pass as first host. And our host should be just localhost like this localhost. And the username is not correct. It's actually called user. So we are just going to use user, the password, the database, this is correct. Our dialect is also correct. 
Um, uh, connection limit and things like that. Yeah, I think I think this should be it. The whole problem was the, the configuration, but let me double check that by running again our API and trying to see if this is actually going well. Uh, okay, I think dialogue is not one of the things that we want to pass. So let me just quit this and try to uh, quit dialect to delete di dialect from R to become fake. I think this is just for something that my that SQLize wants. So let me try to run again. npx ts node index.ts. So we're actually connected to our database. So what do you think if we try to connect inside our API to try to see if everything is going well? So, okay, we have already our message of hell world, but, and how we, and we have been able to connect to our database correctly. So now we try to use a function in our controller, everything should be ready to go. But how we can do that is by first using, uh, creating a new route in our routes model or in our routes, uh, in our routes uh, folder. So how we can do that is by, uh, first of all, we need to create a new route. Uh, how we can create a new route is by, first of all, going into our folder of routes and creating a new file called index.ts. And we're going to be importing some stuff from Express. And this stuff is going to be route. Uh, I think it's called uh, express.router import. Um, router from express and router yeah it is so we're we're going to be importing router and the first thing that we want to create to to use is to install a new router and this router is going to be the one that we are going to be uh using first so we have router already but we're going to be using them right here. So router is going to have our first application right here. Uh, give me just one minute. Okay, I'm back. I'm so sorry for that. I have something in my thoughts. Uh, I don't know what is going on today with me. But yeah, pretty much what we need to do first is to try to uh, to use our router. And how we can use our router is by, first of all, implementing a new constant called router. Um, and this router is going to be an, in, an instance of our router object. And now what we want to do is to say, hey, router, Please take this route that we have inside our app.get and try to use it for yourself. So use just this router that we have right here, but instead of using our app, we use router. And a router is going to be importing, um, is going to be using the same route that we have right here inside our index.ts, but uh, we want to delete this from here. And we actually want to go here into routes and just try to um, import our requests and response from um, a router. So let me just import router, um, comma, request, comma, response. And yeah, everything should be ready to go right now. So yeah, pretty much what we are saying is, hey, router, um, Please come into this file and initialize a new router uh, object that a router is basically just the way that Express tries to use or tries to 
to help our API to know which routes exist in our API and what do you need, what our API should do or which route should I our API send a request that we're receiving to. So yeah, pretty much that's router. And the only thing that we did here is just to get our router um, root root uh, route from our index.ts file, get it right here. And why we want an index.ts route is because we actually are going to have be having like different kinds of routes for all the controllers that we're going to be having or we're going to be using. So we're going to add a new file called uh, users or user routes .ts. And we are actually going to do the same stuff that we were using um, inside our index.ts. But the only thing that we're going to do is to change the way in, inside like how we're using stuff, right? So the first thing that we need to do is to um, is to first of all import our controller that we are already uh, created. Import um, user controller from our user. Um, I think is controller. Yeah, controllers. User controller. And um, let's go here into our controllers. And oh yeah, it's actually called user controller with with this user controller. Let me go here again and try to uh, export default user controller. Are we exporting this user controller? Yeah, we're doing that, right? So uh, type of user controller, how are we calling this? Where are we calling user controller? Um, yeah, we're actually doing that, but I don't know if it is a actual class or uh, blah, blah, blah. we didn't find anything. Uh, commerce control uses any. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this was a problem that we were having right now with TypeScript. Um, alrighty. So I think the first thing that we want to do is to change this from JS to TS. So let's first of all do that. And pretty much, I think this is the first thing that we're using here. And okay, so because we're using TS, we need to import a lot of stuff. So the first thing that we are going to be using is to import um, uh, request and response from, from Express and try to change all of the functions that we are currently having right here. Um, yeah, we can actually do the JS thing, but the problem is that we uh, we want actually this API to be a uh, TS, a uh, uh, real functional TS API, uh, but we have some kind of problems because we were uh, on the last stream just using JS because of uh, some, uh, how, some SQLized stuff. And we wanted to actually try to see on that session how we can implement those functions right there. But yeah, uh, let me just use JS right here. And I mean, uh, go here again and try to just say um, request. And here's going to be a response. And I think we can actually go here and try to say that it's going to be an, no, I don't want this to be an any. I want to actually say a try catch, but let me try to check how we can try catch in TypeScript. So I can um, see which, which is the type of, of the error that we can use uh, actually. Uh, so pretty much, I think we can um, we can just say that error is going to be an unknown, and like implicitly, error is an, an unknown type. But I don't know how we can tell this error. Um, this 
catch block from the error that we're using. So let me go here into something like a block, like this one, and uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, I don't want to see this. I don't know why I'm seeing this. Uh, try blah, blah, blah. error error value string any uh -huh. yeah any but I don't want to see this like this exception variable so I want to say that errors can be an exception but um catch exception type. Exception type error blank so please, uh -huh, with TypeScript. Let me throw a new error. Oh no, catch error. And which which kind is going to be the type of error is the only thing that I'm not getting. Um catch error is going to be a type of error. Uh does that work? And let me see. Uh can we do this? Error. It's going to be sequence error error callback prefers error 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 uh type error no huh let me just double check this of how we can um let me ask to be in in typescript um which is the type of error if we are using a catch block uh their catch is going to be error so uh, so okay so all right let me try to read this in typescript the type of error called in catch block is specifically inter inferred as based on one type of the prone error if you're using a specific error type extending from error, TypeScript will infer type accordingly. For example, if you're using a try catch block to catch an error thrown as new error instance, in the bold example error would interfere as type any because TypeScript cannot determine a specific type error. However, if you are uh however, if you throw an error in a specific type, TypeScript can interfere type uh, accordingly. A uh, message did custom error try custom error uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, error that message error will infer as custom error and uh, error as error huh right the only thing that I want to check right here is what is the name of error right here and where are we using error uh actually it's from error but i don't know what is going on here i know they shouldn't type variable because this catch can be any or you know if, okay so i think we are going to use just any right here so um, yeah pretty much we need, we still need to change a lot of stuff right here like saying that this is a request this is a response uh this is an any And doing the same thing right here, request, response, it's an error of any. And our final bullet user can be also our request. Uh, we are going to use also a response. Finally, we're going to change the type of error to any so we don't have any errors right here. And still we have some problems at the top of our our file is because of models. So uh, we didn't find any type of model equation type has any form implicit uh, models in, in type of any implicit, right? So, okay, we need to do a lot of, a lot of stuff because we're importing our, from our models, we're importing um, or index.js, but we're doing this because um, SQLite automatically uh, uses stuff. So I think for now, we're going to try to ignore this and we're going to continue with our user routes so we can continue with this. So the only thing that you need to know is that we want to get um, to try to read all users 
Um, but actually, what we are going to do is just to try to the user controller that um, prototype. No, I don't want to use this actually. Uh, support the file user controller. User controller is this one, which has the following functions. And I'm still having some problems trying to get our controller to be able to check into our, our user controller um, class. And I think I'm having problems because I'm not actually uh, passing this as a class. I think this should be like initiator uh, type of user controller. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, like new user controller. And I think this is the, uh, yeah, we need, yeah, it, uh, we were not able to actually get into our user controller because we were not uh, using the, we were not initiating our new instance of our controller. So yeah, pretty much what we need, we, we needed to do, or the only thing that we need is just to export our new user controller as a new um, user controller instance uh, is going to be the, the thing that we're going to be importing, I mean, exporting from our model. So we're then going to be importing our model, like import uh, user controller from controllers, user controller. And now that we have access into user controller, the thing that we're going to use inside our our router that get a root path is going to be user controller that um, read users and remember that read users actually tries to find all the users that we are actually having. And actually, uh, we're going to also have a pause one, a put one, and uh, a delete one also. We need to have a router um, that delete. And we're going to use the delete user um, functions. And as you can see here, now a router can, um, can actually understand which functions should we call for each one of our routes depending on the http request that we're receiving so if we receive a get http request we're going to execute the user controller that read users so we can try to respond with uh, with json that uh, has all the users inside our database and uh, if we receive a post a request we are actually going to use a controller and we're going to create a new user and if we receive a put we're going to update the user information depending on the the id of the user and this uh, dot points is an id is this a parameter that we're passing in <clears throat> in the body of our request or our url that we're using and the thing that we're going to be importing i mean exporting is the router that we're having inside our user routes and how we want to use that is by just importing um user routes from uh, user routes and what we're going to be actually importing is just the router that we initialize inside our user routes and how we can use that is by saying hey router please use um i mean router please um <coughs> Sorry for that. Um, router, please uh, use uh, our users or like use the pad users um, as the one who's going to translate our, or transport our request um, from the slash users uh, pad to all the routes that we actually have inside this router. So if a client tries to access to the pad um, slash users, uh, what are we going to be executing is all the routes that we, uh, or the requests or the HTTP requests that a router has already configured so we can handle all the uh, all the controller uh, logic uh, uh, on the back side. So, yeah, pretty much uh, that's it. Uh, I think I was not sharing my screen since a lot of time. So I'm so sorry for that. So <laughs> let me go again. The only thing that we did now is just is just creating a new user routes.ts file where we are initializing a new router object 
with uh, our router variable and we're importing our user controller uh, variables so we can just uh, try to uh, to explain from to our router that depending on the HTTP uh, request that you're going to be receiving, you're going to execute a different function. So if you're if uh, you're receiving a GET HTTP request, you're going to be using the read user function. If you're going to be using the POST one, if you're receiving a POST HTTP request, you're going to be using the create user, put the update user, delete the lead user, and so on and so on. And we're exporting our router object that already has configured all these HTTP uh, requests um, uh, triggers to our index.ts um, route. So we can say to router or to our index.ts, hey, main router, please use the path slash users as the one who, as a transportator to, from our request to the routes that we put our uh, rich uh, HTTP request triggers that we already have configured inside user routes. So if a user or a client tries to access to this slash users path, it is going to be uh, transported to our users um, user routes uh, HTTP request triggers. So we can make an, a different action depending on the type of um, of HTTP request that we're uh, receiving. And now the only thing that we need to do is to try to access to this by just um, importing this route to our index.ts file. So the only thing that we need to import is import import uh, routes from uh, flash routes. And uh, I think we're not even importing anything, uh, exporting anything. So we need to do export default router and now yeah now we should be able to do anything and actually we need to import also routers so we can uh uh try to understand this i think um no actually i think we're not going to do that the only thing that we need to do is uh slash apis there you go so yeah, pretty much we are almost done with this. So let me just change this to uh, to uppercase because we're using a constant. And let me change this again here. Um, didn't we have another port? Port, 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 port. Uh, no, actually we are just using two ports right now. So yeah, pretty much that's it. The only thing that we added to our app constant is to say, hey, this is going to be an app that is going to be using JSON as the um, as data uh, as a, as the a main data from our API, and we're going to be using the, the following routes inside this API. So routes is going to be the router that we're having inside our router index. And this router explains to our API that we're going to be using the following routes. And pretty much that's it. The only thing that we're going to do that is to try to test our um, our API by first of all installing a new uh, extension called Lightning Client, Lightning Client, I think. No, Thunder Client. It's actually called Thunder Client. So we're going to install Thunder Client inside our our, um, our API. And let me just try to check in with, no, we're having a problem. Ugh, no. Okay, so it is the same problem because we're having a TS error. Uh, so I think we can just handle this problem by not using, by using the by going to TS config and to try to um, compiler up on the streak, change to false. And to try to run this again, let me take a look into this. And let's try to see if this is actually a problem. And ta -da -da, ta -da -da, still loading. While it loads, I'm going to open our Thunder client. So we can take a look into this. And okay, so we have a problem. Error cannot find model users. Uh, 
Requires tag, uh, where is users? Model users, requires tag a commerce model index yes, control user uh, uh, index that yes. Okay, so we have a problem right here and we need to fix it ASAP. So, alrighty, oh my God, my computer is almost boring itself. I don't know why it's, it has a, such a big, like a high temperature. Um, okay, function require model not found. And the model not found that we're trying to look is to uh, index.js. Models index yes is users. So oh yeah, it's, it is not actually user, it's user just user like this. Yeah, there you go. And let's try to see if this actually works now. Um so we can uh, try to see if everything is working smoothly. Okay, we're connected to our database. So now let's try to open our port right here and try to share our tab. Uh, let's try to first go here and, and try to open our Thunder client. Oh, yeah, but first of all, we need to go into ports and try to make our current port uh, change the visibility of our port so we can uh, have our port in a public uh, visibility. Let's open a new Thunder client and open a new request. We're going to add a new post request and we're going to actually use the current URL that we have in our compiler uh, API. Let's use the users um, path and let's try to add a new body to this to try to see if everything is working correctly. So remember that our model of, um, of users is actually expecting the following ones, first name, last name, email. So we're going to try to add this right here and let me just try to say that it's going to be, um, oh shoot. First, uh, first name, there you go. And there you go. The first name is going to be David. And uh, the last name is going to be Uh, Lazaro, and let me just try to change this to to JSON format, and the email is going to be um I don't know the Lazaro uh, uh, at uh, mlh.io, and we want to quit this, and also make this um on a string. Okay, there you go. So we should be able to send this and to receive a message right now. And access denied for user hacker localhost using password, no. Uh, all right. Uh, I think we're not using the correct, um, the, the correct uh, error. So access denied for the user hacker localhost using password, no. Right, so we're almost there. We're almost finished with this, but we actually need to fix this. Uh, so yeah, let me just try to go into configuration. We have uh, access denied for using hacker localhost using password, no. Uh, so we want to go right here. So we want to use hack as a password, but I don't know if this is the correct implementation of password. Um, I think we want to actually go into um, into our configuration and try to see if this is the correct DB config. Uh, password. Okay, so we're using password like this, and we're passing hack. So. It actually said that we were connected to our database, right? The problem here is that we want to be able to connect to our database. So, um, so from let's just try to change this query from to say from um, 
e-commerce uh, from uh, how is it called from uh, users well let's try to see that right in our database right so let's just try to run mysql and try to use our uh, show tables and there you go so yeah um use not select no uh show databases first to try to see with the full name of our database and now so we can change now like um uh from uh e-commerce uh, show tables uh Uh, show tables database my SQL uh, connect move uh, use oh yeah we actually need to use use uh, e-commerce uh huh and now uh, show tables mm, and we have an empty set right and why is this I think this is because we haven't even been able to connect to our uh, to create our tables database. So give me just one second until I can grant all permissions to our uh, user that we currently have. So I'm thinking of our solution right now. Mm -mm -mm. What, we, what can we do for solving this? Okay, so the problem, the error was, uh, was this one? Well, list notes. No, I don't want the list notes. I actually want my request. So it says that access denied for hacker localhost using password. No. So let me try. Let's try to see which one is a problem. Um, I'm receiving the following error. Uh, and this is my SQL uh, DB config. And let me pass the DB config um, that we're using right now. And this is going to be something like this. Their message out of hand, this obvious issue, I sure the MySQL user hacker has a correct password set and the application is providing the password when connected by MySQL. Your DB configurator password has hacked, so the problem might be is where your application Establishing the connection to MySQL database, make sure that you, you're passing password field from DB config object when establishing connection. For example, if you view MySQL, blah, 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 blah. MySQL to connection code may look simple like this. Holds user, uh -huh, promise, uh -huh. connection aware MySQL, create connection, uh -huh. that create connection, uh -huh. await. Okay, so let me try to see the initiator where you seen actually uh, that create pool. So we have created a pool and we are actually using our pool. So after using our pool, the only thing that we're using is just trying to establish our server to try to initialize our server. So we're making a pool query. And so we initialize our pool correctly, but actually I think we need to do some other stuff before going with this so okay so we have created our pool and now we are making use of our pool right here but maybe our user doesn't have even the privileges so let me just try to run my sql and now that we have run to my sql let me just use something like um, um like what something like show uh show users and Uh, so should be show users, show user, no, show users in my SQL. Let me try to see which one is like the group in there. Um, okay, so let's try to see this. Select user from what was my SQL. So we have root hacker and let's try to grant all privileges to to user, um, grant all privileges to one user. 
Uh -huh. Ground privileges. Um, to okay, okay. So let me just try to run this. Um, to hacker. The only thing that I'm doing is to try to grant all privileges to hacker to try to see if something is going wrong with my um, with the API or something like that. So we can see if we have some problem. Uh, and where are you using uh, you have an error in your uh blah, blah 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 oh yeah actually we didn't actually change this um where are you index there you are yeah let's just try to use this again and let's just try to run again our application and okay so we're connected to the database now let's try to make the same request that we made before so let's just try to send this and we're having the same problem. X is denied for user hacker localhost. Using password, no. So, using password, no. So, why are we not using password? Let's create, create connection. Uh, create a pool connection. Uh -huh. So, why are we not seeing the connection being made? It's the main question. So let's try to go maybe to our DB configuration again. So we're having DB right here. We're using password. So access denied for using password, no. So we'll use our using password. You create your so identify path pass grant all privileges with grant option. Uh, probably have an anonymous user as a pure model when multiple matches are possible, server must determine which it uses. Therefore, uh, an anonymous, oh, yeah, I'm just taking a look into a stack overflow um, thread to try to see which one is the problem that I'm taking a look uh so i think mainly is the problem of of the of pushing the privileges to to our to our um to our user so okay let me just run again my sql try to run again the run all privileges to hacker so grant all privileges to hacker hacker and uh now do full privileges and preview just okay so now we have privileges to try to run stuff let's see if this actually works and try to see if we're actually using some uh, stuff right here so we are also using this and we have the same problem access denied for user hacker localhost no using password no so localhost hacker password hack e-commerce huh and using password Using password, just my SQL. Uh, access the nine, uh -huh. threads database, access the nine. Uh -huh. My SQL, your root volume password. Um, access the nine for user. Uh -huh. Okay, verify the user has the necessary privileges. Uh, grant all privileges, uh -huh. identify by password. Uh, Okay, maybe uh, I have not been able to to connect this because of the privileges of my user. Maybe I think, but if not, uh, 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 what is going on right now, and why I'm not seeing this? Huh. 
uh, database counter with recognition through uh, uh, commerce. Uh -huh. So let's just try to use this again and try to see if we're able to run anything. Yeah, we're actually able to run this, but let's just try to use MySQL again and try to uh, again run uh, the privileges stuff and try to say that our hacker is going to be having hacker localhost and try to use the this is stuff called um, identified by and password which is hacker and uh, identify identify as identified by identified by and password so okay i think we have something right here uh rental privileges on how to hacker the house identified by hacker identified identified by password Maybe it's this bunch of words. Right by hacker. Check the model that corresponds to MySQL server version for the right sync to near identify by hacker. Uh, what? What is going on here? Real local house, maybe? Um. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know what is going on right now. I don't know why we're running inside this error. Um, but the thing here is that we want to be able to, to use this, but I'm thinking of what is going on right now and what are we trying to, what are we reaching this problem right here? So, okay, let's just try to search for more documentation about this. So, as we saw right here, we're actually using the, the correct um, the correct stuff of the version of our database, if I'm correct. So I'm thinking of like if like uh, we're actually doing the correct thing. Mm. So we have our db.ts. So we are we have our host configurer as local host. We have user as hacker, password as hack, and e-commerce as e-commerce. The problem is why are we not having the permission to get inside here root and our password as this? Um let me try to see by changing the configuration now we are able to try to run this in, instead of using the, the um, no, it's because we're uh, already in use. Huh? We're using that? Wait, what? So it says that the port is already in use, but I don't know why it says that the port is already in use. So should we just stop our port right here? Mm, don't think so, to be honest. Uh, so we want to stop this. And how we can stop this is by just saying, um, change protocol, uh -huh. establish open navigator. Yeah, there you go, delete. And we want to do this again. Wait, what? What is going on? Uh, it was our database, like services. Like, let me see which process are being run. And let me try to see uh, which ports. And how can I look which apps are running in which ports in Ubuntu? I'm just trying to ask ChatGPT how we can do that. Uh, so netstat command displays network connections, routing tables, interface to see all what's important to do this. So I'm going to trust this. And 
Okay, so let's try to see what we're we using. So we're using this following reports. Uh, so we had three thousand. So we're listening. Uh, but I don't want. I want to stop the the one import three thousand. So um, how can I stop? Stop an application running in port three thousand. So identify the uh, user. Uh, blah. Okay, yeah. So we need to identify the ID of the the actual um, command that we're using. So we have a uh, how this be. So we have the ID right now. So we want to now just to kill this process and let's try to do again um, this thing right. Uh, sudo kill this. So let's try to see if this actually was killed because I don't know why uh, like our our um our application is not running like I don't know which application is like listening in port 3000. Oh, uh, there's already news. Okay, so if it is running on 3000, I'm just going to use another port because we have no much time left. So I'm going to listen on app of 8000. So we can continue with this. So let me just do another npx test node index.ts. So what? X is denied for root localhost. What? I just denied for user root localhost. Uh -huh. And why I don't have permission to do that? This is the main question right here. Um, interesting. So, uh, so what do, what is going on right now? Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit uh, uh, getting super confused right now. <sighs> okay, so. So we can um, go here into, into our users and try to see like the privileges. Root should be able to access to localhost. So instead of doing this, I'm going to do 100.0.0.0.0 and try to run this again to see if we are actually able to um, fail to connect to database with the following error. Connection refuse. Uh huh. 127, So, where is our service running actually? So, I'm just going to say localhost again mm, because I'm finding a lot of errors that I'm not really sure of what is going on. And I just already in use, like, already in use. What do you mean, man? Like, we're on running like thousands of stuff right here, uh, like eight thousand maybe. Let's try to see what are we actually using right here, because it says that our port eight thousand is running, but we're not actually running anything. So the only thing that I'm going to do right now is to try to push my changes to like connections. Um, I mean, um, routes and db config create it uh, and to be configured almost configured and let me just push the changes so we can have our changes right here let me synchronize this and try to restart my code spaces right here so let me just um select another um to try to re restart my code space so let me just um refresh everything like um how can i refresh this uh configure extensions fragments and convenient blah, 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 blah. this is not the thing that i'm looking for open this in this code no i don't want to do this mm. so i'm going to i'm guessing that i'm going to use the good old way of code spaces of stop code space and try to restart it and let's try to do that right here and stop it 
So right now our code space should be uh, stopped right now. And we're almost ready to go, I think. So setting up your code space and stopping code space. So, okay, our code space been stopped. So we're almost done. So blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're almost done with this. Mm -mm -mm. That's access denied for you, for, for you, sir, rude. What the host? Uh, pseudo MySQL. Uh, alter user identify with by root identify MySQL using password. So let me just restart this. And I was just trying to read up uh, the uh, uh, stock overflow um, plugin to try to see what is going on here. Open and edit Maham, I will ask skip grant tables. Uh -huh. Restore my skill. You should be able to log in my skill now using the command my skill. You root P and run my skill push privileges and I'll to use root identify by new password and go back. Uh -huh. Restore my skill. Now you should be able to use my skill. You root. So let's try to see if this actually works in our code spaces. Like we have just 10 minutes left or like 13 minutes left and we should be ready to go. Unfortunately, we were not even able to try to run in, in our code spaces. I, I mean, our um, or MySQL. We were finding a lot of errors today. I don't know why. Uh, to be honest, this is something super common in backend stuff and, and on APIs. So don't even worry about it. Like to me, this is the first time that I'm actually running it outside this, but. All right, let me just keep reading the stack overflow uh, solutions to try to see if this works. Uh, in order to use in password to connect to MySQL as root, you will need to switch authentication method from outside to MySQL native password. To do this, open out the MySQL prompt in terminal sudo select uh -huh, from MySQL server and alter user login holes identify with my by password, false privileges, and so do the same stuff right here. All right. So I think now we're going to share this tab to try to see if everything is going smoothly. And let's try to see why are we seeing actually a port a telephone because um, here it says that we're not saying anything. So let me just try to to do uh, mpx uh, uh, node uh, ts node um, index dot ts and try to see what is going on with our database. I don't even think if that our database is running. So yeah, first of all, I think our database is not running. So service um, MySQL start. So, oh yeah, actually we need to first change to su um, sudo su root so we can change to our root user and now do service uh, mysql uh, start so we can now start our mysql service and after doing that we should be able to just run the command of mysql and try to see if everything is working smoothly and just try to continue with this uh, okay, so MySQL, that I server in MySQL, how can I change the directory in existence and chill blah, 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 can I be in X, uh, XC? And let's just try to give it up. So, give it just one little minute. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Mm, okay, let me just do something real quick. And alrighty, so well, now let's do um, MPX node, uh, TS node, MPX TS node. 
index.ts. Try to see if this actually works. And uh, all right, first of all, it fails. And actually, we're not, we were not able to. Oh, right. Now it's running. So now we should be able to see something if we run npx ts node index.ts. And it is not running anything, I think. Uh, so let's try to see what is going on. I think google.com. So our internet connection is working, I think. Uh, but the problem is that we're not we're not doing anything. Uh, this page isn't working. The program continues. Contact this. And what is going on then? npm i. So if I do npx ts node index.ts, it doesn't work either. I think a lot of stuff is going on with this uh, with code spaces today. This is the first time that code spaces. Uh, no, there you go. Now we are working with that. So we have access denied to root localhost. But if we use instead of root uh, a hacker with the, I mean, hacker with hack password, can we access to our database? Is a correct is a question. Yes, we can access to our database, but the problem is, why are we not able to connect to our database uh, if we were able to make just a request? Uh, okay, let's try to see the user's controller. Maybe we're not seeing the, the correct thing. So we're going to be using users, models, CLIs. Um, CLIs, CLI, I think we haven't, run the the migrations i think running migrations yeah okay let's try to do our migration first and maybe that is a problem maybe the problem is that we didn't even run our migrations uh first so let me try to see if uh we're actually able to run our migration first so oh yeah we are actually we actually need to run to change this to our actual database because we have Nick Hacker, we have our data, our password that is hack, and the database that we want to connect is e commerce. And host is this, dialog is MySQL. Okay, so yeah, I want to do MPX, SQL, CLI, DB migrate. So loaded configuration, config JSON using environment development, a ride. So using environment, uh, create user migrating. And okay, so migrations have been created. So now let's try to run MySQL so we can see if um, if our um, database is working. Use e-commerce and show tables. And all right, we have users. So now let's, maybe this was a problem. So now let's try to use TX, uh, our API, and try to see if now we're able to make a request to our API. Uh, so we have controller, we have this. Uh -huh. So now let's use the Thunder client. And let me just open a new uh, code, a uh, new um, notepad so I can do um, my JSON object super quick. And uh, this is going to be name uh, David, comma, last name. It's going to be. Uh, Lazaro and email is going to be um, dlazaro at uh, mlh.io. And this should be ready to go for us. So now let's try to uh, add a new request to our current port that we are using. That is 8,000. Let me take a look if 8,000 is working. It is. So now let me go into this tab and Try to paste this body right here. And let me close this and now copy and paste the URL of our API. And let's try to use users. 
and to use post and try to see if we're using something. So it says that we are unauthorized and let's try to see if we're having any error. So we're not having any error, I think. Uh, problems that we're, is that we're having the problem of unauthorized uh, slash users. Oh yeah, it's because our port is not uh, public. Yeah, we haven't configured that. We need to change the visibility of our port to public. And now let's try to make this uh, question again. All right, so we have, we've been able to make the request and now let's try to see we have, we're able to make the post request. All righty, let's go, let's go. <laughs> we handled to make this out. And now if we make the get a uh, request, there you go, we have our, 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 our JSON almost done. Let me try to see if this is actually correct. This is name. All right, but this should be first name. First name, and this should be last name. No. Last name, there you go. So let me do the post again and righty and now get again the users and there you go we have our user done so i think the main problem was that we we were we didn't run our migration first so migration remember that i thought that uh, we talk about that migrations are the way that our code tell talks with the database and the database uh, in it um, creates tables and this stuff with the help of our models. So we needed to run first our migration to try to tell our database that, hey, this is going to be a to, to exist in the database. So please create all these resources that we need uh, inside our API so we can uh, start working with this. So like luckily we run this, but unfortunately we have almost like two minutes left. So I want to, so I want to first go and recapitulate what uh, we learned like in all this series. So we didn't actually build like a whole uh, e-commerce API, but we actually saw like the importance of the use of a lot of, um, of tools and the complexity of building real world APIs, like with the use of MySQL in a almost production environment. Like um, we learn what is an API, we learn how to use TypeScript, we learn how to uh, create a, a really good architecture that can separate like the logistics of all the stuff that we were going to be using. We didn't have enough time to also see other stuff like creation of middlewares, creation of services. If we're, we were going to be using some other APIs, like, I don't know, our random generator API or something like that. Also, we didn't saw anything about theaters. We didn't saw like good practices in, um, in conventions and naming of some stuff. But like, luckily we learned a lot of how to create a controller with TypeScript, how to create a DB configuration for MySQL, how can we initialize a new MySQL connection, how we can create uh, routes inside this Express.js um, API, how we can use different types of routes and routing inside um, Express.js, and also how we can uh, create all the stuff inside our our application. So let me just finish by pushing all the changes right here. So make let me just um, do something like up working and change all this stuff right here. Confirm the changes, synchronize the changes, and push them to the wrapper so you can take a look into them. So thank you so much for being here for for being my companion here in this series i'm so sorry if we had a lot of errors that we didn't quite get all the stuff that we wanted to take a look into but at the end we're learning and we are a hacking community that can that if we have any questions we can work with each other to try to see which are the solutions that we can take a look into so yeah what I want to say is thank you so much for being here. The, the, the three parts of the series. Thank you so much, Joshi. 
Prayan, Pharaon, thank you so much also to Shimari that is always on these streams that I think today is not here. But what I want to say is thank you so much for being here. I hope that uh, that you learn a lot in this Global Hack Week of uh, APIs. And if you have any question, just send me a message on Discord. And uh, and yeah, pretty much that's it. Like I, uh, I was so glad to be here with you. Thank you so much for reminding me, even when I had a lot of errors. Uh, I love you so much, everyone. So I'll see you um, in other screen in the next Global Hack Week. So I'll see you then. And thank you so much again for being here with me. So I'll see you in the next Global Hack Week. Remember that is the Data Global Hack Week. So we're going to learn a lot about databases, about Vectorel databases. We have pendant uh, the data stream of Vectorel databases, so we can build a real co-application with the help of Web8 or some other databases that are super incredible. So I'll see you in the next month. And it was so nice and a pleasure to be here with you. So I'll see you next month and see ya, everyone. Have a nice night, day, or whatever time is in your zone. See ya, everyone. Bye.